What's the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? Well, it's a really a matter of degree. If you, the ability to make insulin, which is what controls blood sugar in the final analysis, is a continuum. You have people over on this side that make plenty all they need, and then people at this end that make nothing. And about 5% into this, you draw a line and you say, everybody over here has type 1, and everybody over here has type 2. It's not black and white. Uh, so people with very mild type 2, and they can actually, over time, even progress to where they lose enough insulin-making ability to where they start acting like, quote, type 1, end quote. So it's really a, a spectrum. It's not a clear-cut delineation. Uh, in general, if you could differentiate 1 and 2, which is most common? Number two is far more common. How Bob. common? Golly, there must be 10, 12, 14 million Americans that are diagnosed with type two, and there's probably a lot more than that that are like being just a little bit pregnant. Yeah, they've got a little bit of diabetes. Yeah, a little sweet. When you've got a little bit of diabetes, yeah. you can have the very same symptomatic problems, can't you, with blood vessel disease and eye problems and amputations? Yes. So a little bit pregnant means you can have a little bit of diabetes and it's... Imp Do these have, people not know they've got it? Have absolutely no symptoms at all. In fact, depending on which study you read, sometimes you will find that up to 30 or 40 percent of people already have diabetes changes in their eyes or their kidneys or their nerves at the time they're ultimately diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So clearly they've had coming on slowly, creeping up on them for years and just didn't know.